in fact. So, uh, but before we go there, let's just have a quick look at, you know, how SRAMs, DRAMs and flash compare on various axes. So SRAMs are very, very fast. They have uh, access times at times of the order of hundreds of picoseconds in advanced technologies. DRAMs are fast. Their access times is of the order of nanoseconds, tens of nanoseconds. Flash is much slower. If you want to access a flash, the access time is of the order of um, a few microseconds. Hmm? So flash cannot really be used as a cache. For cache purposes, you need an SRAM only. L2 or L3 cache, you could think of DRAMs, but not even not flash there. Hmm? There is another reason why flash cannot be used in, SRAM, in, in, in L1 or L2 caches. Why? Because look at the third row, the parameter called endurance. Endurance means how many reads and writes can I do on this particular memory? For SRAMs and DRAMs, it's almost infinite. But for flash, um, it's, it's of the order of say tens of thousands. Now, how does that limit flash from being used as a cache? Because if you can, for example, if you can do only one lakh writes onto a flash, you have a chip that is operating at uh, one gigahertz and memory activity factor is 0.1. One gigahertz activity factor 0.1. How many accesses do you need to the memory within one uh, second? Quickly. 0.1 giga. 100 million. Hmm? Of this 100 million cycles per second, let us say only 10% were write cycles. So how many write cycles? 10 million. 10. 10 million. How many times did we say a flash could read or write? Uh, could, could you write into the flash? One lakh. One lakh. One lakh. So in less than a second, the chip will be done. Are you able to see this? So even if I improve the speed of flash so that it matches the speed of the processor, due to endurance reasons, I cannot use flash as a cache. Flash, however, is a very, very good and dense uh, means of data storage uh, in the non-volatile space. Is that okay? Are you able to see this aspect? Sir, uh, how did uh, this endurance decide for a memory which in better and okay so for now you can say that and endurance is decided by some reason but we know for flash that endurance is low hmm? so if you would do the course course of solid state devices and and study about reliability mechanisms there you will see that when a when a device is operated at a very high voltage it's reliability degrades very significantly. So you can use the device at a very high voltage only for a short duration of time. As we will see in the later part of the course, when we design flashes and when we do read and write in the flashes, we operate the memory at very high voltages, 12 volts, 15 volts, 18 volts. Hmm? So the device degradation is very fast and therefore flashes have low endurance. Is that okay? So then uh, another thing is that DRAMs require refresh. DRAMs are dynamic random access memories. As we discussed just a little while back, DRAMs would store information on capacitors in form of charge. So capacitors uh, would not be able to replenish any loss of charge due to leakage and all devices leak. So after some time, the charge on the DRAM capacitor would, would kind of go so weak that you cannot read that DRAM capacitor. So what we do is we write into the DRAM capacitor at every defined predefined frequency. This write operation or this periodic write operation is called refresh. 
and that is the reason why DRAM also consumes more power than SRAMs and flash memories. Is that okay? We will go into much more detail of what refreshes and how it is done. But for now, just comparing these three types and arriving at a conclusion that I, I can use SRAMs for L1, L2 caches, DRAMs for L2, L3 caches, flash for main mem for, for uh, final storage. Are you able to see this? This is where we started today's session from. Are you able to see the logic behind usage, the way we use them, Vishal? So the L1 and L2 caches are volatile. Uh, processor actually interact mostly with them. So isn't it a bad thing like uh, whenever the power is lost, this interaction will, and this rate will get high. Yes, you lose that data. Generally, uh, generally in some application, we store the instruction in processor itself. So uh, those instructions will never uh, erased uh, if, uh, if I'm not wrong. But if the power is lost, the processor goes off. Um, but again, when the power is on, like in the case of Arduino, if I say, if I program, uh, if I remove the power supply and again connect it, it will hold the program which I had uh, uploaded. Okay. So what happens in such systems is that there would be some non-volatile memory also placed on the chip. So the power down sequence involves storing the present state of the processor onto that non-volatile memory and the boot up operation involves recovering that information from the non-volatile memory and booting the system up in the desired manner. Okay, so whenever the power is on, this booting uh, will uh, load this instruction in volatile memory. Yes. Okay, Akash. Sir, uh, you mentioned that uh, in the phone that we, have, we say 8 GB RAM or 16 GB RAM, we use 8 DRAM there. But sir, DRAM is uh, uh, basically slower than SRAM and it also requires a periodic refreshal. But still we use DRAM. Is that it because uh, SRAM consumes more area due to that trade-off? Yes, it's, uh, DRAMs are much denser than SRAMs. And in memories, area is? Gold. Diamond. 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 Harshit. Uh, sir, what does scalable mean? You're coming. We're just coming to that. So scalable means, uh, so what is technology scaling? What is technology, technology scaling? Technology, 65 nm, 7 nm. Yeah, we are able to reduce the size of devices and still maintain the frequency of operation or get a better frequency of operation, better power and all that. That is what scaling meant, reducing, being able to reduce the size of devices. Hmm? So while SRAMs is only transistors based, all transistors, so you can scale it. Flash, as we will see later, is also only transistors primarily. So you can scale that also to some extent. But DRAMs, DRAMs we're talking about transistors and capacitors. So capacitors, if you reduce their area, what happens? The value of the capacitor reduces. So you can now store lesser charge onto the capacitor. So scalability goes for a toss because lesser charge means I have to, uh, so lesser charge means that that charge, the, the charge would become not readable much earlier than, than previous implementation, previous technology. So it means that the refresh frequency has to be increased. It means memory would not be accessible for all those refresh cycles, which means that overall throughput that I can expect from this particular memory would reduce. So that is why we are saying it's, it is bad in terms of scalability. Does that help? Yes, sir. Uh, sir. Uh, so if we are using uh, like capacitors with lesser areas, why the frequency of uh, refreshing is increasing? Okay, so if the capacitor is of lesser area, what happens? The value of the capacitor? Will decrease. Reduces. The yes. value of the capacitor reduces. Even if we say I, I keep the same voltage, what happens to the charge stored on the capacitor? It will also decrease. It will reduce. Now, 
let us say the devices are also leaking exactly the same way as earlier technology in fact device leakage increases as you scale let us say it is the same as the earlier technology now what happens now we will not able to read like it will leak more it will leak Anything? more so i will yeah. need to refresh faster okay okay sir yes sir clear everyone yes sir yes nikhil it's clear okay so in in flash you said we use some uh, high voltages because of, because of its endurance is poor but you are saying that uh, the power is low yeah because uh, you use other schemes so that even in the presence of that high voltage uh, the currents are low okay overall um, overall you do lots of things in parallel when you go to that high voltage and therefore uh, you still need lesser power only you will see we'll come to the flash impl implementation later okay